I swear I don't work for Pedal PCB. This week, it's the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion build. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Before I get started, I just want to remind you down below, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell icon as well so you get all of my latest notifications. This week we are looking at the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion Pedal Effects Board from Pedal PCB. I must say this is one of my favorite distortion clones that I've built in a long time. It is a clone of the PG-13 by JHS, which is essentially Paul Gilbert's signature pedal. And I just can't say enough good things about it. It's just an awesome, wicked distortion. On the outside of the PG-13, you have six control knobs. You have the volume, the middle, the drive, the tone, the sweep, which is actually a sweep of your middle frequencies, and finally a push control. Now, one thing you need to know, the drive is kind of like your gain stage and the push is like your preamp stage. So you're gonna get gain essentially by increasing your push or your drive uh, control knobs. As with all 125B case builds from Pedal PCB, you're also gonna get your top mounted jacks and your top mounted power supply. Looking inside the pedal, nothing too special here. You get that crisp board from Pedal PCB. Uh, obviously your top mounted audio jacks, top mounted power supply. Two things that are probably worth noting here is this one does require a dual potentiometer. You can't see it, it's underneath, it's in the middle, but it is a dual linear 100K potentiometer, something that might not be in most uh, effects boards builds. And then also you have these three trim pots here, which represent the trim pots for biasing these three JFETs. And I'll just kind of put that up to the camera quickly. Hopefully it will uh, focus on it. But essentially you need to make sure that you adjust those trim pots after your build, check the biases on those JFETs to get this pedal to work. So I do wanna go over the schematic for this because I do think there's something very interesting, which you'll see towards the end of the description. So let's just quickly flip over to the schematic for the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion Effects Board. So we are looking at the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion schematic. Uh, as always, let's start with the power supply here. Uh, there's really two things going on in the power supply circuit. The first of which is defining our reference voltage. So we have nine volts coming through this uh, 1N5817 diode. This is essentially just for circuit protection. Um, but what's really important here is we have two 10K uh, resistors in series and we're tapping in between them to get our reference voltage. So that means if VCC is at nine volts, our reference voltage is going to be at four and a half volts. And that'll be used later when we look at the inputs to the op amps above. Secondly, if we scroll over to the right, we see we can have the TC1044SCPA chip. Uh, I've mentioned this many times before, this is used for voltage doubling. So what we're essentially doing using this chip is taking that nine volt input, running it through this chip and doubling it so we can have an 18 volt internally boosted voltage supply. And that 18 volt source is actually going to be applied to the uh, tops of our JFETs here. So the rails, I guess you can call it, of the JFETs. And that just allows for a little bit of extra headroom when we do some of this gain stuff up above. Uh, zooming out, we can look at the first part of our circuit here, uh, over to the left. Uh, nothing crazy going on here. We have that one mega ohm pull down resistor. We've got our coupling capacitor, very common components to the input. Our voltage ref, you can see, uh, remembering this is four and a half volts. This is actually be what our uh, input DC bias will be for our guitar signal. So you can think of having your guitar signal sitting on top of 4.5 volts. And that's just to make sure that it doesn't bounce off the rails when this, is, uh, this op amp is between zero and nine volts. Uh, what's going on with this op amp? Well, not really a lot. We have a little bit of gain. It's a non-inverting amplifier. Uh, with the 47 picofarads, we're also getting a little bit of filtering, uh, frequency filtering, but really this is just a small gain. I think it would probably work out to be something about three times your input signal. So think of it kind of like a preamp. Into the second stage, now this one gets a little bit convoluted. I'm not going to go into it. I'll actually zoom out. Um, but essentially what we're doing here is doing a mid boost to the input signal or the output of this IC11 
and that mid boost is going to be decided on a middle frequency that is used uh, or determined using this sweep potentiometer. And the sweep potentiometer is actually a dual pot. So essentially what's going on is how much we boost the mids and where that mid is determined by these two op amps here. Lastly, uh, before we get on to the JFETs, we have IC12. Uh, this is an inverting op amp, so we're inverting our signal. Uh, we have a 4K7 and a 4K7 uh, in these two positions, which is essentially going to make the gain of this op amp 1. So it's not necessarily a buffer, but it's very close. Obviously, with that 47 picofarad uh, capacitor in there, there's going to be a little bit of filtering properties, but nothing grandiose. Um, we then go into a coupling capacitor and then out through our push potentiometer. So a couple interesting things here. One is all the items with the, the mid and the sweep and the push are kind of in the first part of the circuit. Another notable thing is if you turn that push all the way down, it's going to act like a volume um, essentially a volume button as well, or a volume knob as well. If this push goes all the way down, you're gonna ground the input to the second part of the circuit and essentially get uh, no output. So going into the second half of this schematic, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Uh, what essentially what we have is cascading JFETs in a common source configuration. And that means that we have our input on our gate and our output on our drain. Uh, so you can see that for Q1, uh, we have input on three, output on one. Uh, input on three, output on one for Q2, and then for Q3, same thing, input on the gate, output on the drain. So they're all common source, which means that we're gonna get really high current gain. So a lot of gains happening here. We have our drive defined here with this potentiometer. So this is just adjusting that gain. The second stage through Q2, uh, we adjust our tone. So this is, again, just an, another passive tone circuit. And uh, one thing you need to remember when you're setting uh, this circuit up or when you're, you're building this circuit is you do have to use these trim pots here to set the reference voltage for the uh, transistors. I set mine so I was at 9 volts here, which is about half of the rails, and that gave me plenty of headroom for my, uh, for my signals, didn't have any uh, hissing or anything like that. So what I also find interesting about this circuit here is it is very similar, maybe almost the same, some would say, as another JHS pedal, and that is the Superbolt. Um, essentially, the Superbolt is the same um, three cascading common source amplifiers. Uh, we have very similar drive and tone. I believe the uh, JHS Superbolt does have a switch in it somewhere in the tone uh, stage, but more or less this uh, Blue Shoe Guy Pan is essentially a preamp with a mid sweep feeding into your JHS Superbolt. And uh, what I can try to do is actually put these beside each other and you can see how similar the two circuits are, at least in the second stage of the Blue Shoe Guy Pan and the JHS Superbolt schematic. So now having the Blue Shoe Guy Pan on the right and the Super 64, which is a clone of the Superbolt on the left, you can see that these circuits are very similar. Uh, just walking through, you can see from uh, a transistor one or Q1 perspective, we have the exact same components, exact same drive um, circuit uh, for, uh, for the Super 64 or the Super Bolt and the Blue Shoe Guy Pan. The second stage varies a little bit, um, similar type of tone circuit, but you have a switch here in the Super Bolt and you have that um, built in 120K resistor in the Blue Shoe Guy Pan. Um, if we move over to the third stage and see how that looks, um, again, a little bit different resistor values here, but again, the capacitors to ground, 12K, 12K resistors, it's more or less the same circuit. It might sound just a little bit different, but I'm not sure that anybody could really pick that up. Um, the only other thing worth noting is the trim pots, I guess, uh, in the Super Bolt. For some reason, they use a 50K here uh, with 100K in the Blue Shoe Guy Pan. Again, this is just a set of voltage, so I'm not sure they both could be 100K and not affect the circuit really at all. Hopefully you guys got a little bit from that overview of the effects pedal for the Blue Shoe Guy Pan. I actually must say I've built 
a Superbolt in the past. This one's just on barrel board, but I love the extra effects that are put in here with the middle sweep and the push. Um, I really do just appreciate being able to dial back some of the mids. I found that my Superbolt sometimes can get a little bit whiny, a little bit too much higher mids. So I really do appreciate having that sweep and maybe that's what Paul Gilbert was thinking as well. So definitely if you like the Superbolt, you're gonna like the uh, PG-13 or the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion. So just lastly, before we go to the demo, a couple things to note about the build. Build time's about 45 minutes to an hour. And I'll just reiterate one last time, before you close this guy up, make sure to set those trim pots so you get that uh, biasing correct on all those JFETs or you're gonna have some trouble with your pedal. So with that, let's just take a listen to what the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion can do.
Hopefully you guys enjoyed that demo of the Blue Shoe Guy Pan Distortion from Pedal PCB. Like I said, it's one of my favorite distortion clones in a long time. I also say I'm not, you know, uh, affiliated with Pedal PCB in any way. I do a lot of their builds. I just really do appreciate, you know, the quality of them and also how fast they can get out some of these clones. It's really crazy. The PG-13 is not even a year old, I don't think. So uh, I've had this on my bench for a while, at least three or four months. They were really quick getting this to market and I think that's also pretty cool of them. So with that, we'll close it up for this week. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.